Mark Facebook thinks augmented and virtual reality are so critical to humanity's next stage of collective digi evolution that he just changed his name to Mark Meta. Dialed his emotion chip all the way up to two and went very publicly Reckham Ralphing through a range of absolutely uncanny experiences from gaming to gathering to meeting to, well, thankfully not mating, but you get the idea. After having totally missed out on owning mobile and consequently having his app subject to the privacy policies of iOS and the constant intermediation of Android, he simply doesn't want anyone, anything, coming between his Oculus fronted horizon harvesters and our data, all of our data. But according to Morgan Stanley, Tim Apple's own VR and AR projects are getting ready for liftoff as well. And they're likely to leapfrog what every other company, including Meta, has in mind. I'm Renee Ritchie. Thanks Curiosity Stream plus Nebula for sponsoring. Hit that subscribe button so we can build the best community in tech together. And let's do this. Now, personally, I think Morgan Stanley has gotten a quad major part of this whole story just completely wrong here. But I'll get to that in a second because the instant, the instant Facebook bought Oculus, my first thought was, well, Facebook in my browser, I can kill that tab at any time. Facebook on my phone, I can kill that app. They're only ever one quick click or flick from being out of my life. But Facebook on my literal face, a face hugger book, so to speak, that is not so easy to kill. Likewise, app tracking transparency, privacy labels and reports, private relay, just everything I spoke about in my last video that can prevent, just shut down Facebook from creeping on me through my Apple products. But Oculus is a Facebook product and you better believe that they're not offering us any of those kinds of privacy protections. No, owning the platform means Facebook owns everything, including everything we do on the platform, no matter how personal, how private, it's data harvesting God mode. And that's why Meta, nay Facebook, is seemingly willing to give away headsets at close to cost because they're not the product, as the saying goes. That way, all the connections we make feed their social graph. All the actions we take train their behavioral models and all the things we buy get tracked and taxed by their marketplace and all the things we see get overlaid with their ads also that they can own this next big evolution of the internet what facebook is calling the metaverse which <laughs> swear to jobs sounds like the revenge branding plan from the cringe marketer who failed to make cyberspace at all popular like three years after going online stopped being even remotely nerd chic now Apple's plan. Apple's plan is almost the exact opposite of Facebook's. No new company names, no CEO in Wonderland videos, and absolutely no VR or AR headsets or glasses on the market, not yet. It's been more of a slow software and services burn because Apple can get all of that out and test driven by all of those billion plus iPhones in our pockets and iPads in our backpacks, y'all. That is if Apple doesn't just totally screw up the landing again the way they did last time, but more on that in a second, because they already have ARKit, their beyond solid augmented reality framework. And more recently, Object Capture, which lets you easily scan IRL objects into virtual ones and share their USDZ files as easily as you share an animated GIF GIF today. Those are the obvious bits, the critical components for getting everyone from developers to creators on board, hell, pre-boarded. But Apple isn't just priming the power users, they're boiling the mainstream as well. Making an avatar for VR or AR may seem weird or awkward, unless you've already spent the last five years playing with increasingly sophisticated Memoji and are so well past being perfectly comfortable with your own digital self. Having the world around you constantly scanned and ingested and understood by computer vision might seem disorienting, even off-putting at first, if you hadn't had LiDAR on your iPad or iPhone or played with any of Apple's event or product demos in the last few years. Watching a TV show or a movie or sporting event or concert in a virtual theater might feel lonely or isolated if you hadn't already tried it out through share play with your friends and family. Except instead of being pipped into each other's screens, you're sitting next to each other in a virtual theater in all of your emoji glory. And instead of FaceTime group calls in Brady Bunch boxes, sorry, Instagrids, we're all emojied around virtual tables or picnic blankets or whatever with spatial audio making it sound like we're exactly where we look like we are. Even live text and object recognition. And yeah, I'm basically just running the board on the last couple of years of WWC announcements now, but even live text and object recognition 
Those are all about bringing really real reality into the virtual and augmented reality, the computational one, where we can act on them, help riff on them if we want to. And the list just goes on and on and on. But here's where I think Morgan Stanley got it wrong. VR and AR aren't a product and certainly aren't a singular product. They're a human interface like screens and they'll exist across a range of products like screens do today on Macs and iPhones and Apple Watches. There'll be overlap for sure, but the VR headset is gonna start off as like a next generation Apple TV, all about experience and immersion, where the AR glasses are gonna start off more like a next generation Apple Watch and AirPods, all about enhancement and convenience. And the VR headset will come first, just like the Apple TV came first, because the tech is just much closer to a solved problem than AR glasses. And it'll be expensive at first, especially if rumors of ultra high density 8K displays and M2 Pro Max class chipsets pan out with just all the scanners and sensors imaginable to match. But here's the key. It'll also let Apple move all the existing services, everything they've gotten primed and ready from the Apple TV to the Apple Vision headset or whatever they end up calling it. Not just TV Plus shows, but Fitness Plus with SharePlay for group workouts, Apple Music concerts, Apple Arcade Arena games, and everything from every entertainment and education and health and fitness and game developer and studio on the iOS App Store who wants to be part of this new ROS App Store, Reality OS App Store, which yes, Apple cannot afford to screw up the way they did the TVOS App Store with the absolutely stupefying last minute mandate that everyone had to have compatibility with the Siri remote and use on-demand resources, causing every major studio to just hit the brakes on their iPhone goodwill fueled plans for the platform and just wait and see the wait causing there to be nothing to see. It's an own goal that Apple TV still hasn't recovered from. And if you wanna see a video on that debacle, just let me know in the comments. But either way, anyway, hopefully just all the lessons learned by now because Facebook is going for the commodity hardware play here. They have a network effect on their side. Every big blue Insta, WhatsApp and Messenger user in their pockets and will likely be paying through, through Mark's positronic nose for content and creator deals. They're gonna go all out. Microsoft too, because they had mobile and lost it. And Google, who no doubt wants to keep their position with Android every bit as much as Apple wants to keep the one they have with iOS. Maybe even Amazon, Sony, and Nintendo. But the truth is, Metaverse, like Web 3.0, is in its very nascent, most molten of tech nerd and grifter-fueled states right now. And it's probably not gonna end up being anything like what the hustlers and dreamers wanna sell us right now. Just like the iPhone and Android made the internet mobile, and that created immense opportunity for everything from WeChat to Uber to TikTok to Pokemon Go to voiceover. This all will simply make the internet virtual and that by itself will create another wave of tremendous opportunity for everything that comes next. Like me sitting in 10 forward, cruising along at warp 6.9 with all of you watching my full video on Apple VR and AR plans on Nebula. That's where I post all of my videos, including extended versions of my interviews, like my recent chat with Apple's VPs of Silicon and the Mac, as well as my reviews, explainers, and my exclusive documentary on the original iPhone. There was no question that was a game changer phone that was ahead of its time. We're gonna make some history together today. The iPhone really, I mean, it has changed, I mean, my life in so many ways. All on Nebula, where I have the luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube, but where I just know the nerdiest, most hardcore of you will absolutely love them. Plus Nebula just launched a Roku app. So now we have that and Apple TV and picture in picture on iOS bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie or click the link below. And right now, because you're watching this video, you can get CuriosityStream on Black Friday sale for 42% off, less than 12 bucks a year, less than the price of a turkey dinner for the whole entire year. And that includes Curiosity Stream's thousands of amazing documentaries and series, like The Year We Rocked the World, where you can relive some of the most iconic moments in recent history, the moments that shaped politics, film, crime, science, celebrity, the arts, and more. It is the best way to support educational creators directly and the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 42% off Curiosity Stream, less than 12 bucks a year, Nebula bundled in for free. Just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so it is hitting up this playlist for more, much more on the battle between Apple and Facebook for the future and everything that's coming next. Just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.